kind of amazing to me how we've like totally memory hold climate change and just swept it under the rug. Especially because like every other day now I stumble across a story that's absolutely terrifying that <laughs> reminds me like there's no time left to really course correct. Like we're already fucksville. This story came out the other day. Phoenix hits 100 days of 100 degrees with no end to the streak in sight. 100 days of 100 degrees. Wow. By the way, the average uh, temperature this summer in Phoenix was 99. So in other words, uh, 100 days of 100 degrees, that means that the high was over 100 for 100 days straight. Insane. But the average temperature in the summer, including the nighttime, 99 degrees. That is a full two degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the previous record. Okay, this is a runaway train, dog. This is a runaway, runaway train that we're on. Phoenix has smashed heat record after heat record this summer and is on track to top some more as a deadly heat wave is forecast to arrive Wednesday. Oh, Jesus. A heat wave, even though you're already over 100 degrees every day. That's great. Extreme heat is becoming increasingly common in Phoenix and the Southwest. Heat contributed to 645 deaths in Metro Phoenix last year. Jesus Christ. 645? The Maricopa County Office of the Medical Examiner has already confirmed 177 heat-related deaths this year and is investigating another 436. Phoenix hit 100 degrees for the 100th day in a row Tuesday, uh, and the streak has no end in sight. The previous 100-plus degree streak was 76 days set in 1993. The old record was 76 days from 1993, and now it's 100 days with no end in sight? Bro, Phoenix... Average temperature of the meteorological summer was uh, 98.9 degrees, beating the record of 97 from last year. Nas uh, per National Weather Service, Phoenix meteorolo meteorologist Sean Benedict. 2023 saw higher individual daytime temperatures. Uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport recorded 31 straight days of at least 110. Jesus, from July 30th to from June 30th to July 30th. But this summer's heat started much earlier and has sustained since late May, Benedict told Axios. Last year's 100-degree 100 100 streak was 66 days. Four of the six hottest summers on record were in the past six years. Four of the six hottest summers on record were in the past six years. Heat waves are becoming more common, intense, and longer-lasting due to human-caused global warming. Climate change has been found to yield extreme heat events that would have been virtually impossible... Without today's high levels of greenhouse gases put in the atmosphere largely by fossil fuels burnt for energy. A strong heat dome will send temperatures soaring into 110 degree territory in Phoenix as, as early as Wednesday. The valley will be under an excessive heat warning from Wednesday at 11 a.m. to Friday at 8 p.m. Thursday is expected to be the warmest day of the heat wave with high temperatures forecast in the 110 to 114 degree range. Phoenix has hit 110 54 times this year. And this week's elevated temperatures will likely be hot enough to top last year's record of 55 110-degree days. Jesus Christ. Just because we've made it through several months of hot weather does not mean we are fully acclimatized to handle the extreme heat we are expected to see this week, Benedict cautioned. Anybody can be impacted by this heat, especially if you have long exposure outdoors. So do not golf in Phoenix this week. That, that's what I'm taking away from this. I am not done, y'all. Record-setting heat waves are baking the Arctic region. Northern Canada, Alaska, and northern Scandinavia have recently experienced record highs. Parts of the Arctic are enduring exceptionally high temperatures, up to 30 to 40 degrees above normal because of multiple intense heat domes. One intense heat dome has progressed from northern Alaska to Canada's Hudson Bay over the last week, delivering round after round of historically high temperatures. A smaller but equally persistent heat dome has been toasting parts of Scandinavia's Arctic on the opposite side of the North Pole. The exceptional warmth intensified by human-caused climate change is affecting a region that has warmed three times as much as the global average. And it's happening... And it's happening as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration just announced July 4th was the 14th successive month with record high global temperatures. Record high global temperatures. I'm not done. BBC article. Digging riverbeds in Zimbabwe in desperate search for water. 
Here's a picture of such. One of the worst droughts in living memory is sweeping across southern Africa, leaving close to 70 million people without enough food and water. In Mudzi District in northern Zimbabwe, a community and their livestock are gathered on a bone-dry riverbed. The Vombozi normally flows uh, throughout the year, but right now it's just beige sand as far as the eye can see. So they're literally digging holes and bringing buckets and drinking brown water and having their livestock drink brown water in order to try to survive. And of course, then you risk getting very sick because the water's not exactly clean. Rivers and dams have dried up in other parts of the district. And as a result, more and more people are descending on this specific riverbed in Karima Village, putting pressure on the water source. They go on to explain how this 43-year-old woman tells BBC how she has to walk three hours every day trying to fetch water. This is preposterous, guys. This is preposterous. Food is also in short supply in Zimbabwe, where 7.7 million people face hunger. This is all because of climate change. They go on to say, you know, whatever stuff they're able to, to grow, the seasons are fucked up. Look, this, is, this was the logical end result and the thing that everybody should have been fearing from day one, but it wasn't brought up nearly enough, is what are you going to do when it's drought and when it's famine? What are you going to do when there's wars over water? What are you going to do when there's not enough food to feed everybody? What are you going to do when certain regions become totally uninhabitable because of such things and because of such extreme heat that people just can't live there anymore? What are you going to do in those scenarios? Apparently, our answer is to shove our head in the sand. By the way, like, think about the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans here. The Republicans are like, climate change is fake. It's not real. Go fuck yourself. We love ExxonMobil. We love big oil. We're going to drill baby drill. We're going to frack baby frack. We're going to do all that. And... Go fuck yourself if you want to do any sort of semblance of green and renewable technology. That stuff is a scam. We hate you. Piss off. That's the Republican position. The Democratic position is still at this late date. We're all of the above. So yes, we did the IRA. Yes, we tried to uh, reel in climate change a little bit here and there. Um, yes, we're doing. there's 300,000 new green and renewable technology jobs. We want to do investment. We want to bring more electric cars. We want to do some investment into wind and geothermal and all the different green energy stuff. Yes, all that stuff is true. But, hey, look at this chart. We just uh, we just uh, broke the oil record for, for the U.S. We just uh, increased fracking permits. Look at this. Isn't that, isn't that cool? We're doing everything. We're doing all the above. No, that is not cool. Um, they act like they don't know that we're in a crisis. They act like they don't know we are the frog in boiling water right now. And those are your options. All the above. Or, LOL, fuck green energy and renewable technology and we love oil and we want to drink oil and we want to jack off with fucking natural gas. And th those are your, this is insane. This is insane. And then you see stories like this every other day and it's like, oh, I don't think we're doing enough to combat that. I mean, honestly, at this late date, it seems like what we're relying upon is some sort of technology to get the carbon out of the atmosphere, Right. It's like we're hoping at the last minute somebody's going to swoop in and be like, oh, I figured out a way to fix climate change. That's really what we're hoping. Because clearly we ain't doing enough. Clearly we ain't doing enough. And unfortunately, I think this stuff is just getting started. Um, there's also a really anomalous and weird thing going on uh, right now with hurricane season. I don't know how many of you guys have been following this, but the predictions early on were that it was going to be the worst hurricane season ever. The water is just record high temperatures. Everything's primed to just boom light everybody up, m multiple massive hurricanes. Instead, we got one of the earliest and strongest hurricanes on record. And then it was, and then it stopped. It was quiet. And meteorologists are looking around like, we literally don't know, uh, not, not meteorologists, I'm sorry, the experts who on, on this sort of extreme weather are looking around and they're going, we literally don't know why there aren't more massive hurricanes attacking us. All of the ingredients are there, but it's not happening. And... I think we're going to run into a lot more situations like this moving forward, right? Where whatever our models are, whatever calculations we made, it's just, we're in uncharted territory. We don't know what's going to happen. And that's a terrifying thought. And um, they talk about the ocean current is on the brink of collapse, the way the ocean circulates in the Atlantic. What are the other consequences of that? I don't know, right? I don't know. But, uh, it ain't looking pretty, I know that much, because it doesn't take a genius to learn that having no water, having a famine, having extreme drought, having 100 days over 100 degrees, that doesn't seem good, and it seems like uh, it's only going to get worse. All right, y'all.
that's the show. Love you all very much. You know the drill. Everybody do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. That helps out big time. Cost you nothing. Thank you to everybody who supports this show on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. Remember, I never talk to any advertisers, so you guys fund two bucks at a time, five bucks at a time, etc. Uh, we got Jordan Charity coming on Crystal Kylan Friend this week to talk about um, all of his reporting vis-a-vis -vis our water being poisoned, right? Flint, Michigan, all that stuff. Uh, it should be really substantive and really interesting conversation. Everybody check that out. You can sign up for Crystal Kyle and Friends below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.